All right, everybody, welcome back to Roma Reviews. We have a very special uh, edition of the show that we're going to do today because behind me is a 2020 Chevy Bolt. And not just any 2020 Chevy Bolt, it's mine. It's yours. And you've owned a lot of cars, Brian. I've owned a lot of cars. You've you have too. Don't pretend like you haven't either, but I've owned quite a few. Okay, but you've owned so many cars that during our last review of the Kia Sorento, you forgot that you had even owned the Kia Sorento. I did. It's gotten that bad. I want to say yeah. it's probably over 40 cars at this yeah, point in my lifetime. I have owned a lot of cars, but you still may have doubled me up. Sports sedans, Jeeps, trucks, large SUVs, small SUVs. Wagons, diesel wagons, plug-in hybrids, full electrics, which brings us to today. To this. Okay, and this is something I've wanted to talk about for a very long time. And the reason that we're talking to you about it now is that this car is going away and we're, we're gonna tell the story about what's gonna replace it. But I've wanted to talk about the Bolt forever because out of 40 plus cars, this car is the first time that I've ever gone back and said, give me one just like it. This is actually the second Chevy Bolt that we've owned, okay? I should say owned. So in 2017, we leased yeah. a 2017 Bolt. Mm -hmm. At the end of that lease, took it back, handed them the keys and said, I got to have one just like it. It's that good. It is good. I'm excited to do this one too. I've been wanting to do it for a while because I have told many people that I think this is the best car that GM has ever made, or at least ever. made in my lifetime, let's say. And we should actually start yeah. with a little bit of story about the Bolt, because we're such huge car nerds that mm -hmm. we've actually traveled all over the U.S. to different car shows. We've been to, I've been to Detroit, L.A., New York. Geneva. Geneva, Switzerland. Yeah. Amazing opportunity. The stars aligned. But in 2015, I was at the Detroit Auto Show, and Mary Barra at the time was talking about the new Chevy Volt plug-in hybrid. And at the end of that keynote speech, she said, and one more thing. And that one more thing was the Bolt pure EV concept car that got unveiled there. And at the time was promised to be a 200 mile all electric vehicle, sub $40,000 price point, in fact, mm -hmm. Later on, they actually started talking about uh, the price point right around $30,000. And what was so amazing at the time was that uh, obviously revolutionary just from a, a cost standpoint for the public. Um, it was an economy car. It looked cool. It kind of had that hot hatch look that you see here, but it was a little bit bigger. And I remember going to the show and, and seeing the car for the first time and going, what is that? And the more I read about it, the more intrigued I was. Fast forward 15 months from unveiling the concept that caught everybody off guard, mm -hmm. and GM put this product on the road, which is mind boggling. This is General Motors we're talking <laughs> about. Yes. General Motors that- The behemoth. A behemoth. I mean, they will announce a car five, six years in advance, and you, and you have to wait that long uh, to actually see it on the road. What GM did was they assembled kind of their best and brightest and they turned them loose on a product and they kind of said, start from scratch, from the ground up, rethink everything about how we, how we design cars inside and out and how we build them because they knew that electrification was the future. Yeah. And, you know, look, that's a lot of high praise just from a process standpoint. Yeah. And then it got here and it's fantastic. And look, it's not a sports car. No. Okay. It's not this giant family hauler, but what it is, is probably one of the very best just daily driver cars you can have around town running errands it really is and that's that's why i tell people i think it's so good and the best one they've made now look you could talk about things like a corvette or something like yeah. that which you know yeah. with like a dollar An engineering masterpiece ratio. sure but this was the first one from gm that i really felt like was designed and engineered with real intention yes. and actually went from concept to market with all of those intentions in place and didn't just get butchered by a bunch of accountants. Absolutely. Yeah. You could tell they got the engineering teams, the design teams 
got to do what they wanted to do. From exterior design all the way to the materials that they chose uh, inside. Um, and I think that's probably where we're gonna go next is we're gonna jump in the car and actually show you what it looks like uh, inside that sets it apart. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about who I think this car is really for because it's been so great for our family, not just us driving to work every day, but we got teenage drivers. And this turned out to be one of the, the best possible cars to teach teenagers how to drive. Absolutely. And I'll kind of talk through why that is when we get in the car. So should we do that? Let's we'll do it. We'll pop inside. All right, let's go. All right, we're gonna pop inside. Uh, and even though this is my car, Casey's gonna take uh, kind <laughs> of a, a tour around the vehicle. Cause you know, again, from the outside looking in, this looks like a small hatch, but it's actually pretty big inside. It's fairly big, and like I said, designed with intention. It is what it is, it knows what it is, which is rare to me for a GM product. It is a commuter. It's not really designed to carry more than one person, but it still does that okay. In fact, actually, our mom has one of these as well, and she spends quite a bit of time driving my kids around in hers with car seats in it. There's plenty of room back there. We've got the seats way way back right now but all the way back all the way back but there's a good amount of room there's a good amount of room in the hatch uh because of the electric architecture you know you can still have a very low floor which leads to decent seat height in a car this small right which makes it more comfortable even if you don't have leg room here having it here can be just as important and that gives you lots and lots of headroom yeah so you're well over tall, six feet tall over six feet tall and still plenty of headroom in this car. Uh, like you said, you have your teenage kids in the back of the car. They're not small. Well, one of them isn't. And <laughs> you guys tool around in this car in plenty of comfort, right? That's the thing I love about it is that, well, we'll get to the driving experience later, but it's very adaptable. It's a great commuter, really great interior design. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look just up here at the front, how simple it is, because mm -hmm. th this is one of those instances where GM really rethought everything and they simplified it and they went with their own design for this car. So, you know, we've got some lights on here. You're gonna have to press the brake to start it, Casey. It's an electric car. Uh, I know you're not yes, used to indeed. that, but it will fire up. We'll have to make sure that uh, that radio doesn't pop on, get those lights off. But look at this interface. So you got a really simple so stack right there in the front. Um, not too much information, not too busy. What in the heck? <laughs> We're not... Uh... Bon Jovi was just determined. Yeah. Look, it's going to try it again. So Android Auto does some goofy things. Oh, that's what... The Android Auto was on autoplay, so that's yep. what happened. It just fired right up. And... Yeah, no problem. Uh, but kind of the standard fare on the steering wheel, although I sure. think it first appeared on the Chevy Bolt, these soft touch buttons. Uh, yeah. But uh, very yeah. simple controls, very simple information in the middle. Um, you can change radio, you can uh, get all the information you want through there. But right here in the middle, it's pretty cool. It is a huge screen for its time. Uh, whether it was the 2017 or the 2020, you get a right. ton Still of real had estate. That big screen. It was very different at the time. Full screen Android Auto in this car. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not a lot of buttons, but the buttons that you need. Okay, so you've got your volume control. You've got your fast forward and and you know previous track button. You got a home button, which, hello, that is awesome. More manufacturers need please, a home button. <laughs> please keep including the home button. We got a you know, simple interface up here, your audio, phone, OnStar, camera mode, pop back into Android Auto or CarPlay, depending on which one you've got. But I just really love having the climate control buttons like this. So one thing I do wanna to touch on with those younger drivers is just where you actually sit in the car yeah. and the visibility. Mm -hmm. So you sit upright, mm -hmm. you've got tremendous visibility out those side windows, You've even got this little opening yes. up there. Yeah. And you get this commanding view of the road. And that coupled with simple controls and mm -hmm. also something that we can touch on more later, but one pedal driving. Yes. When you're first learning to drive, it's like an extra safety system built yeah. in. You know, so 
being able to pop this thing down um, into what they call L mode, you take your foot off the gas, the car starts to slow down and brake itself. Yeah, so tremendously, all of those things really just added up to a really yeah. easy driving experience. And let's not forget about this too. You mentioned visibility uh, for the teenage driver, and this I'll pop around and show that. Yeah, because this has a feature that I really love from GM. I wish they offered it on more products um, because it's really great. It's not available on all trim models, but this, if you notice, the rear view mirror is a screen. Um, and you can change it to just a plain mirror. Hello. But the screen is awesome. It's a little unnerving at first. It's using your, your backup camera, right, to basically display what's behind you. Um, but once you get used to it, you won't want to go back. It completely eliminates blind spots, gives you this full 180 view of what's going on behind you. Um, if you've got lots of cargo or passengers in the back that might normally be blocking your view of the back, not an issue with this. It's a really fantastic feature that I hope uh, more manufacturers adopt and I hope GM starts to offer it on more models and more trims. We gotta move the car inside it's mosquito season and they're coming after us big time. So Casey's gonna move the car in. Get a little flavor of what it sounds like driving the electric car around in the Chevy, nice space age sound. All right, so we had to move inside. We were losing the light. This is really intended to be kind of a short one anyway, introduce yep. you to the car uh, because it's actually going away soon. Yeah, yeah, and that's a, an interesting story. So as much as we love this car, as phenomenal as it's been, uh, GM did run into trouble with uh, the Bolt product. Uh, very well publicized, uh, issues with the batteries, uh, a manufacturing defect that in a very, very, very small few cases, um, these batteries can catch fire, can kind of get a runaway thermal situation going on. And so General Motors decided to recall every Chevy Bolt uh, that they built and replace them or replace the battery pack. And we actually opted for a new 2023 Bolt EUV to replace mm -hmm. this car. Uh, like I said, we've had no complaints. We just want to be able to park it inside and charge it to its yeah. fullest range. And the new products uh, have an updated um, battery chemistry and an updated battery design and that problem should be long gone uh and you know anyway well yeah and look in my opinion as much as we love this car the entire ev universe right is still a little bit in the teething stage absolutely it's the people buying them are still early adopters in my opinion and if something like that, a recall like that, worries you that much, I think maybe the EV market's not quite for you yet. That's just my opinion. I think that's fair. You know, yeah. I think we are starting to get over that hump. I think yeah. from an adoption standpoint, uh, you know, there's there's plenty of these on the road. Tesla's made such huge inroads. Mm -hmm. Every manufacturer, I saw a, a Mercedes EQS today. Mm. First one I'd seen uh, out on the road and you know, people are, once they drive electric, uh, they kind of fall in love with the experience. And, you know, the, the range anxiety is something that people talked about early on. This car uh, is supposed to get about 240 miles of range. Uh, the furthest I've ever gone from home is about 60 miles. It is not a road trip car. It's just not. And it's not for people who need something, you know, where they're gonna drive 100 miles and turn around and come back in the same day because it doesn't charge fast enough, okay? And there's not enough chargers out there uh, to really support that kind of driving unless you really plan ahead. So mm -hmm. it really needs to be uh, one of two cars in a family stable or three cars. Uh, and because we had that situation, that allowed this car to be the real family workhorse on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. Like if we're running to play practice or to a church event or to work, this was the car that we chose almost 100% of the time. It's, it's just that good and that easy to get around town. So, you know, that's really the sweet spot for EVs. 
Uh, there are more innovations in the space uh, coming. Uh, we, we actually anticipate a Rivian R1T being in the fleet in the very near future. That's a car that charges at a much higher rate, longer range, and has the promise of high-speed charging and a high-speed charging network similar to what Tesla has. So once you start to bring those things into the mix, then you can start thinking about a road trip in an EV. Uh, I still don't think we're really there to do it comfortably without a lot of planning, but we're getting really close. Um, so we wanted to tell you this story because probably in a day or two, this thing is gone. The 2023 Bolt EUV, which is a little bit bigger mm -hmm. uh, and has some really cool new technologies, will be in the garage and we are going to do a full review on that. Super Cruise, longer range, wireless Android Auto and CarPlay, uh, but we're really looking forward to that Super Cruise probably more than anything, which is semi-autonomous driving. Yeah, out on the we have not gotten our hands on one of those yet. That's definitely the thing I'm looking forward to in this one. Absolutely. And the size. I mean, this is small. It is it's, small. It's really big enough for yep. like the things you're doing and everything. Don't get your hopes up. Yeah. The Bolt EUV is not that much bigger. Yeah. Uh, I'll be really interested to see what you think of it. I've sat in one, okay. uh, but you know, you being a little bit bigger, you may feel even more comfortable. You may notice the size difference. So maybe we'll see. And with two little ones in car seats and the things that come with it, you know, maybe it'll make a, a little bit more difference. All right, look, thanks for tuning in to what may be the worst review. I don't, maybe the best, but probably the worst review we've ever done. Sure. But it's a story that we had to tell yeah. and we, uh, we had to get it done now before this thing goes away. So right. thanks for watching Roma Reviews. Appreciate it. Uh, subscribe, like, do all those things. Awkward wave.